I, I think that's kind of what I'm what I'm thinking. Yeah. As the game continues to progress, it's going to get so stagnant that they're going to have to make a bunch of rule changes. Yeah. And in the same way they did, when when did they take out like the hooking and the two line pass and whatever? Let me go through a few things. Okay. It might be boring, but it might not no, no, be. It's, it's kind of interesting. Cool. I just I just took some. There's uh, oh, yeah. because I could be like, and then one day, once upon a time, they yeah. added <laughs> rubber pucks that weighed yeah. six ounces. Like so, 1910, three periods changed from having two periods of hockey. 1911 uh, and 12. But this is National Hockey League now. Yeah. Okay. Nas- NHL rules where it would be an official game. Six players on the ice from seven. So goalie and six players. Uh, 1917 goalies were allowed to fall. Previously, it was a penalty if they fell to the ice. That's an interesting one. Yeah, that's cool. So this is so this is where when you look back, wow, I didn't know that. So that's yeah, cool because now what I'm saying about stand like, up gonna, goalies. Yeah. When then they started to turn into being butterfly goalies, right? Well, no, no, not even yet. Yeah, not even yet. Yeah, but that's not even the start yet. They of being allowed, allowed to fall. That's that's so much not allowed to fall. It would be a penalty. Wow. Right? 1918, two lines were painted on the ice, 20 feet from the center ice. So. Three playing zones were created, created a 40-foot neutral zone for forward passing because forward passing was permitted at that time. Yeah. So this is what? 1918. Um, I got to change sides here. Yeah. I got to actually do something else with my life. Um, <laughs> where was I? 1918? Yeah. Two-line pass. Uh, yeah. So forward passing was where – that's the neutral zone was where forward, forward passing was permitted. Uh, kicking the puck was uh, permitted now in this zone, in the neutral zone. Uh, started calculating assists in 1918, so it okay. wasn't it wasn't actually a point unless you scored. So 1921, goalies were allowed to pass the puck to the blue to the blue line. Minor penalties are, were two minutes from three minutes, and there's a whole bunch in between. These are the ones that just kind of caught my eye. 1925 to encourage offense, no more than two D permitted. To remain inside the zone when the puck left the D zone, so you, you couldn't have two people because I guess people used to hang back, yeah, right? Because yeah. it was all forward, right. you could, no forward passing. Uh, teams could only dress twelve players, no big deal. Uh, Nineteen twenty-seven, that's when I was born. <laughs> forward passes were forward passes were allowed in the D zone and neutral zone. So now the yeah two now yeah three twenty-minute periods were brought in, and then you were, had to change ends every period. So, this is so, cool, man. so you're you're talking about like will it change? Like that's uh, 17 years. There's a, that's huge change. It's yeah. not the same game now. Well, right. from what it started, and that's what I'm that's what I'm saying, right? But because it, the only difference now is because it's such a huge entertainment thing. Yeah, the driver is always going to be the money, yeah. right? Which is if if people are watching and it's not interesting anymore, that's right, because it's so stagnant. Yeah, then. There's going to be another like drastic That's set right. of rule changes That's right. to bring it back to where it's exciting. Well, they did you know? that with the trapezoid behind the net right. because Marty Brodeur used to control a game as a goalie, Ron Hextall and stuff like that. Yeah. And those are things that, that are more modern, but they're huge. Yeah. So, okay, so 1927. So 1928, forward passes al- allowed in all three zones. So now it's starting to look like, like hockey now. Yeah. Right before, it would have looked like rugby. So you could see the violence, right? Yeah. So I was, I was reading and watching this stuff. They were saying that there was a lot of deaths in hockey because it was violent. Yeah. Guys would club you over the head. Oh, yeah. It was a violent, violent, violent sport. So we look at it now. It's not as violent. It's violent. Yeah. But it's not even close to what it was because it was all scrums and just clubbing guys. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, so you're a tough man. The There's, stick work. The one guy they were talking about was uh, one-eyed, one-eyed McGee because he was a pretty good player. That guy sounds tough. Yeah. One-eyed McGee. <laughs> one-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> that was his name. One-eyed McGee. Yeah. Imagine playing <laughs> one-eyed McGee. <laughs> Uh, change it appears. Okay, nineteen twenty six forward passes allowed in all three zones. Uh, goalies forbidden forbidden to hold the puck, so they had to throw it. Uh, nineteen twenty nine offside, new rule offside. There's a whole that's a game changer. Game changer. Yep. Right. Uh, only three players allowed in the D zone, including goalie. I don't really understand that. One. Visible time clocks were uh, required in every rink. Oh, cool. Uh, that's undercover game changer for sure. Yeah, 1937 icing is introduced. Interesting. See, you, you, you think it's always there? Yeah. Like that wasn't a rule when it started, right? Center red line introduced introduced in 1943. No red line before. Yeah. Uh, you're allowed to have 17 players plus a goalie in 49, 69 curves. They started curving sticks, and they were limited to one inch. Yeah. Uh, 1979. This is a big one. You ready? Yeah. 
let me think of someone for Gord, uh, Craig McTavish. Okay. No one? Yeah. What about him? He didn't wear a helmet? That's right. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Sick. 1979 wearing helmets were mandatory for players entering the NHL. Right. So you remember? Guys That's, and I remember because you would start to see the phase yeah. out where it's similar with visors now, right? Visors now. If like you didn't have one, you don't have yeah. to put one Zach on. Zach and Dalton were the ones that were the last year that they last year. didn't yeah. have to put a visor on. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think the last one I put, yeah, the last one I put that was is kind of relevant, it was really relevant to me, was in 2005, the red line eliminated for two line passes. So remember I told you that when I played, it was a, it's a different game. Yeah. Like that's what I said. I said in one of the podcasts, I said, the game now, from even when I played, it's unrec- not unrecognizable, but it's like so different. Yeah. Because we had the red line. So, you know, neutral zone trapping, we did like, the coaches were too stupid to think yeah. of anything like that, but... Neutral zone trapping. You had to make. Chris well, I like, had the red line I, when I started you? playing. Yeah, yeah I guess you when would've. I started yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, still yeah, had the red line. Would've. It yeah. was the red line and the stick work. Yeah, you could like so yeah. hooking, for example. You couldn't. It was only hooking if you like grabbed them and held on. Yeah, you took. His but you head could. Off. You could do little little yeah. pulls, and that wasn't hooking Cutching, yet. Cutting, right? cutting, clutching, and grabbing. Yeah. And th- that all I remember that yeah. when I was a kid, when I first started playing travel, that mm. was still a thing. Yeah. And then it got phased out. By the time I was like 12 or yeah. 13, it was gone now. Yeah. But I remember it being there because I remember a guy I used to play with. Um, that was like, a, I have like vivid memories of him. He was the hook guy. Yeah. My age. And he was just like, give guys little tugs and pulls and whatever. And it yeah. was cool. It was, I remember the that change happening. Yeah. The two like, line pass was huge. Hey, Lot, you can do Hey Lottie now. Yeah. But like, you can yeah, throw the long dude, bombs. It, it opened up the speed of the game. Right. And, uh, but, you know, you think about like what type of players, like that's why you can can't ever say well, you can say Gretzky's the best, this guy's the best, Bobby Orr's the best, but it's like yeah. totally different hockey. So they're the best at the time. Like, dude, we used to when when I played junior, it was like that's why you used to have big plugs out there and it would be you'd you'd be in small no, spaces. Yeah, no space. and you just, yeah. Big and get in the way. Clutch, grab, yeah. hack, whack, yeah. and skating was important. But it wasn't the importantness. Yeah, important. like no, it was. It's very important still. You had to be a very good hockey player. But, you, but you know, sometimes it was just the bigger man won. Well, and side note on that, I got into a little back and forth exchange with somebody who commented because we were talking about. I don't know if it was who the best player was or whoever. Anyways, and people always argue about like who the best player is, which is a non-starter. First of all, you can't. There's no comparison. You can't make it from different eras. You no, can't compare. How do you do it? But my argument about that is always whoever the best players were at the time would still be the best players today because they did whatever it took to be the best player of the time. Yeah, so probably. if you go, if, if you go Gretzky today, assuming he was at the, you know, the peak of the practicing methods and training methods of the time yeah. and whatever it was, yeah. if you put him here, he would have done the same thing. He yeah. would have been at relatively, all the, relatively, yeah. right. He would have, so maybe not 215 points one year, but right. maybe he would have been a top right. player. Yeah. He would have right? been because so they would smart. do the same thing as they did with what the tools they have now, you know what I mean? So, but that's an interesting separate question.